Okay guys, so we are making apple butter. I didn't show you the process of peeling and coring all those apples. You want to get the peels off, you want to get the core out, then you just add them into a pot. About six and a half pounds, guesstimate, rough demit. It's kind of hard to say how much is in there, but then you're going to add the seasonings. Okay, so then you need a half cup of sugar, of white granulated sugar. A half cup of brown sugar, light or dark, I've got light brown sugar. Now you can put one and a half tablespoons of cinnamon in. I am not going to add the cinnamon, Mike is not a cinnamon fan. So I'm not going to add that. Then you need one tablespoon of vanilla extract, which I... Stir that up real good and then you're just going to cook this on low until you've basically cooked it down. This could take a while. It could be three hours. It could be six hours. It's going to take a while. Just let it cook down. You do not need to add any water or liquid into this because the apples are going to provide liquid pretty quickly in the cooking process. Now we just gotta light this up. Once you have cooked down your apple butter, you're gonna take your immersion blender. Sorry guys, I completely forgot to start the recording and this step. Boys! But once it's cooked down in your hot jars um, that are sterilized, you're going to put your hot apple butter. Um, make sure you leave a half inch of head space and use your funnel so you don't get it all over the lips of the jar. You take this, uh, this little thing here kind of go along the edges to make sure there's no bubbles sorry for the boys that don't want to stop even though they're asked to stop so you're just going to kind of go along the walls and that pushes the bubbles out and then you're going to put your sterilized lids on and you're going to put it into the water bath for 20 minutes once it's at a rolling boil with the lid on the water bath. If you get any food on the lips of the jar, make sure you um, clean that off so that way it seals. But we're gonna put those lids on just fingertip tight, not extremely tight, not too loose though because you don't want them to come too loose to where water gets into the jar. And then I'm gonna get them into the canner. Ideally, your water bath canner would be completely filled up with jars. This is what I got. It's late. I'm not doing more tonight. I just got to get this stuff canned, so I'm just going to can it. But make sure the water is at least an inch above the lids, covering the lids. And bring this up to a boil. Once it's boiling, you put the lid on and you let it continue at a rolling border, boil, border, boil for 20 minutes. Then you let it set for five minutes before you take it out and don't tip the jars. Take the bands off tomorrow, so wait 24 hours and check the seals. Store it with the bands off. So after 24 hours of waiting and letting your canned goods cool naturally, you always take the rings, as you can see in the pile here, off of the jars. You don't want the rings to stay on. Some people store them with the rings on, but if you do, keep them light, like not very tight, because too much tightness of those rings could cause this pressure, or the pressure around this band, to cause the seal to break prematurely. So you don't want to keep those rings on. I don't store them with the rings on. If I do, I put them on very lightly, just for stacking purposes. So that way the stacked can isn't sitting on the seal either. So there's reasons. But, you're going to check the tops. When it's a fresh seal, fresh can, there's a bubble right here, kind of like on jelly containers, that is up. And when you press it, you'll hear the pinging sound. You want to press the center, make sure there's no pinging, make sure there's no pinging anywhere in the jar, lid at all, just to make sure that there's no like broken seal anywhere. Um, but as you see, there's no broken seals going on. And then you just want to... Kind of lightly pull on the edges 
You don't want to pull heavy. You don't have to necessarily pick it up by the edge. But if there's any break, broken seal, it's going to just lift off or you're going to hear some hissing. You're going to know it's broken. So you're going to check that. Once that's said and done, you can now move this to your shelf. Make sure it's a sturdy shelf. I don't like stacking my jars if I don't have to because I don't want to risk breaking a seal or it falling um, and breaking. It's a lot of work for it to break. This is a full day of canning and this is what I got. So <laughs> it's a lot of work for what you get, but it tastes amazing. So that's how you would check the seal the next day. And now you can move it to your shelf after you label it. You're, of course, going to label your jar, um, what it is, the date you did it. And you typically have about one year of shelf life. Some people leave it two and three years later. One year is usually the recommended. So happy canning, guys. Catch you on the next one.